Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Rembeard, and today we're going to talk about the most respectable dwarven clan, the Stormpike clan. A long time ago, the Stormpikes lived in the Altrek Mountains, north of Hillsborough foothills. Over the centuries, they migrated to the southeast, blending in with the other dwarven clans. At a certain point, the dwarves of the Stormpike clan got very interested in their ancestors and they wanted to go back to the Altrek Mountains and search for relics of their past. You see, the Stormpikes were, and still are, very wealthy, so the relics might be valuable. The fact that there were a lot of resources to mine in the mountains contributed heavily to the decision to actually go there. A band of dwarves, a small army even, set out to the mountains, led by the presumed mountain king, General Vandar Stormpike. They built a small base, including the fortress of Dumbaldar, and started excavating the place, but this went all but well. During their absence, Frostwolf orcs had made part of the mountains their own, and unbeknownst to the dwarves, they laid their disease to rest in the mountains. The Stormpikes basically started mining away at the Frostwolf burial grounds, and it's not hard to imagine the orcs' reaction. The orcs launched a full-on attack on the dwarves, and because the dwarves somehow still didn't know about the fact that they were excavating a cemetery, they came with a counter-attack. A few bystanders like Bran Bronzebeard managed to understand the situation, and asked the dwarves to retreat, and for them to propose peace. But as you may know, dwarves are rather stubborn, and now in full on war they did not command peace. The war between the Stormpikes and the Frostwolves got out of hand and became a full on battleground that we now know as Alterac Valley. Some other dwarves, some night elves and even a small army of humans reinforced the Stormpikes so it appears the war may yet continue for quite some years. In Alterac Valley we see that the Stormpike dwarves train owls as pets as well as rams. If a person proves himself worthy to the Stormpike he or she may obtain a Stormpike bred ram as a token of respect. There are only a few uniquely named Stormpikes in the Alteric War, but a lot of dwarves, so it's presumed most of the dwarves are Stormpikes. I'll talk a bit about the named ones, however. We have Corporal Norek Stormpike, whose name literally means Norway in Norwegian, and only directs you towards the Stormpike Quartermaster. In a tunnel leading to the battleground, we find Sergeant Durgen Stormpike. Durgen actually gives you some quests to do inside Alteric Valley, assaulting a tower, a graveyard and a mine. Another dwarf, Lieutenant Hagedin, supposedly a Stormpike, wants you to retrieve a Stormpike banner. If you bring him this banner, he gives you a book written by the last dwarf named Stormpike inside Alterac Valley. No other than Vandar Stormpike, of course. I'll read the introduction to this very small book because it's quite funny. The Frostwolf Artichoke, Tales of Stormpike Glory by Vandar Stormpike. What is Frostwolf? The answer is simple. The Frostwolves are savages trying to halt our sovereign imperialistic imperative. Much like an artichoke, the Frostwolves have a prickly shielded set of defenses. And much like an artichoke, once the outer layer is peeled away, the heart is exposed, ready to be eaten with a fine garlic dip. Delicious. Furthermore, he writes about the strategic points in Alterac and several strategies that players might use. So it appears that Vanda thinks very high of the Stormpikes and thinks very, very low of the Frostwolf. This explains why he will not end the war, even though he might see the futility of it all. I feel like he's an overly proud man. We can also see this in the fact that he yells, Soldiers of Stormpike, your general is under attack. I require aid. Come on, come on. Slay these mangy Frostwolf dogs when being attacked. It's also interesting to note that Vandar formed an alliance with Ivar Bloodfang and his pack, and that together they set up a base on the mysterious Bogation Isle. There are no quests on this island, however, not even an NPC to talk to, so I have a feeling this island was never really finished. And that's it for the Stormpikes in Alterac, although you might also count the Stormpike emissaries who walk around the Alliance capitals promoting the fight in Alterac Valley, as they come from Alterac. But let's talk a bit about the Stormpikes that have nothing to do with Alterac as of now. To start off, we have Murin Stormpike, a revered warrior in Ironforge. When a young dwarven warrior managed to get to Karanos, when class quests were still around, the warrior trainer there would send him or her to Murin for some advanced training. The first thing Murin would have you do is kill the toughest ice throw in the area, Vedrak. If you manage to do this, Murin would teach you the famous defensive stance, Taunt and Sunder Armor. After that, he would send you to a smith at the Great Forge, Thomas Deepforge so you could acquire some better weaponry. You would help Deforge on some quests and get your weapons, but Mirren was out of the picture from here on out. He's cool though. Another Stormpike in Ironforge is the nameless Prospector Stormpike, who sends you on all sorts of quests when leveling through Azeroth. When we first meet him, he tells us that a dwarf in Lochmodon, Iron Band, needs more gunpowder and that we're to oversee the powder being delivered, as an earlier shipment did not reach its destination. Afterwards, he also wants us to help Iron Band with whatever he's doing, and we do. Another time we meet the Prospector is when we find an encrypted letter on the body of a thief in the Alterac foothills. We first bring it to a lawmaster in South Shore, but when he's not able to translate the letter, he sends us to Prospector Stormpike. Stormpike manages to translate the letter, and we continue on our business to deal with its contents. 
Last but not least, he tells us to find Balog, one of the three dwarves that ventured into Uldamon. And man, what an epic dungeon that used to be. A very minor but rather funny Stormpike is Tamara Stormpike, who is unfortunately deceased as of the Cataclysm. She's a level 25 rare in the Hillsbred Foothills, but was a bit unsure about her sexuality before the Cataclysm, and she could either spawn as a male or a female. Now in death, she's always a female. The very last Stormpike I'd like to talk to you about is the one that everyone who has leveled and alive to in the past years knows. Mountaineer Gringer Stormpike. When you walk around Stormwind, as a level 9 to 20 adventurer, and you reach the Dwarven District, you'll most likely come across Grimond Elmore. Grimond seems a bit full of himself as he states the following. The Stormpikes are a respected Dwarven clan, and are well known for their fine and discerning tastes. So it's no wonder that Gringer Stormpike, a mountaineer of Ironforge, commissioned me to craft him a weapon. The weapon is finished, but the fact that Mountaineer Stormpike is all the way in Loch Modan poses a problem for Grimond, and he sends us to do his running work. We make the trek, and Grimond thanks us for our troubles. At some point, the Mountaineer actually makes us go back to Stormwind, as he wants a shield made by an armorsmith he admires, Furon Longbeard. This dwarf has also made his home in the Dwarven District in Stormwind, so on the move we are, but hey, at least we're getting paid. In Loch Modan, Mountaineer Stormpike plays a main role in the questline around the Kobolds in Loch Modan. He sends us on different quests to slay Kobolds and retrieve mining gear stolen by Kobolds. These quests haven't changed much since Vanilla, aside from one thing. If we complete his quest right now, we find out about the fact that the Kobolds are being let by a gnoll. This is very weird, and Mountaineer Stormpike sends us to Thalsamar to tell the Mountaineers there about this peculiar discovery. In a questline there, we find out all about the gnolls, but that is for you to discover. One more time we meet Gringer, when we finish up the Loch Modem questline, it is only fitting that he is the one to send us off to our new adventures in the wetlands, and that is all. Thank you so much for tuning in and learning about the Stormpikes, although I'm not so sure about their respectableness with the war and all. No, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.